morning everybody I am not having a, a very good morning I am so worried and, and stressed and upset about all the news reports coming out of Louisiana I just wish I could be down there and, and do something to help but I can't I mean I'm almost 70 years old so <laughs> there's no way I could go down there and help all I can do is just um, continue to pray and lift everybody up to God and, and just ask God to take care of everybody. And I did hear from Beverly yesterday. She left a comment and um, I pinned it under the video. Uh, she said they're okay. They did not get any uh, tree damage or any type of damage to their homes. Um, her son and daughter-in-law and grandkids live next door to her, um, so they are also okay and no damage to their home, so I was real happy to hear that. Of course, they have no electricity. Uh, they do have a generator, but you know, even when you have a generator, you have to use it very sparingly and just keep the, um, the electricity going to your refrigerator mainly to keep food keep your food from spoiling and it's just chaos down there I've, I've lived through it I've lived through Camille I've lived through other hurricanes I don't remember the names of them but it's chaos just trying to get water and essentials and then with the COVID-19 that adds insult to injury These New Yorkers better let me merge. In 2005, when Katrina hit, my oldest sister Angela and her husband, uh, they live in Texas, they went to Home Depot and bought six generators and put them in the back of their truck and took them to Mississippi and gave them to my, uh, my family in Mississippi. At that time, my brother Malcolm was on oxygen. So it was imperative that he have a generator to survive. So they do have those generators now to help them. So my, my sister Bobby and her family and my nieces and nephew, they're, they're okay. Um, you know, they do have the generators to help get them through, but I know it's difficult and I do worry about them. I haven't heard from Nancy yet. She also lives on the North Shore. She's the one that I was telling you about that was in the closet with her husband and Roxy and Roxy's little blanket that they named the Fofi. But I'm exhausted. I don't, I don't even know how many days in a row I've babysat now. Y'all probably can keep up with it better than me. I think I babysit Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday night, until Sunday around 11 a.m. Uh, Jill and Husani go, uh, every now and then they have these boat cruises that leave out of Brooklyn into, uh, they go down the, you know, out to the harbor. You know, they play soca music or Trinidadian themed and they like to go with their friends and family and have a nice little cruise. I think the cruise was from 11 p.m. until 4 a.m. So they got home around 5 a.m. Sunday and, you know, I could have driven home then, but I was asleep in her bed downstairs because that's where the nursery is and Ife is still in the nursery. But whenever they got home around five, I went upstairs into the spare bedroom, which will be Ife's bedroom when she gets old enough to sleep upstairs by herself. So I went up there and went to sleep until the children woke up around eight. And then I, uh, 
made their breakfast and took care of them so that Jill and Husani could get some sleep. I guess I left her house around 11 Sunday. So I really haven't been able to get to the grocery store and shop and plan meals to, to do videos on and record. I think everybody is just tired and worn out and weary of this COVID and, you know, we all rushed to get the vaccinations and thinking that everything was going to return to normal and now we've been just um, knocked down and knocked down again because of this Delta variant spreading like wildfire and killing everybody. So on my right eye, I have a sty. It's an internal sty, which I've never had. I think I've had one sty in my whole life, and I believe it was an external sty. I never even heard of this internal sty. It's got some weird name to it. So when I got home from Jill's yesterday, I looked. I have a little tiny magnifying mirror, so I got in there and pulled my... Um, pulled my eye down and looked inside it and sure enough there's a little pus field on I think it's called a postule or something in there so I cleaned it I took a q-chip and cleaned it up and got all that gook out of my eye So I went online last night to see what the treatment is, and it's um, apply warm compresses to the eye, and also to clean it and to clean it, said to wash it with baby shampoo. I'm not going to do that. Said to clean it with um, salt water, and then apply hot compresses to it during the day. But it hurts. <laughs> Every time I blink my eyes, I get this sharp pain shooting through it. <sighs> I'm just tired. So when you have something, oh, my hair's sticking up. When you have something like a sty or some kind of ache or pain on your body, that adds to your stress level. I just feel very, um, my heart is heavy. I just feel burdened for so many people in Louisiana and Mississippi that are going through and now the hurricane is traveling up through up this way and spurning tornadoes and devastation all through the country and then all the wildfires burning out in California you know now they're having to evacuate the Lake Tahoe area it's just oh it's just calamity everywhere. So, you know, it's only natural that that we um, that we feel their stress and their burdens. So we will continue to lift everybody up in prayer and ask God to Please bring rain to the west, California and, and Washington State, and Oregon, all the, all the states out in the west who are dealing with these wildfires and the air that's so heavy and full of smoke and hard to, to breathe. I have a lot of subscribers out there who have um, COPD and um, asthma and bronchitis and all types of um, lung problems. And y'all please continue to pray for Beverly and for Nancy, my family in Mississippi, my friend Dale and her husband, they evacuated. They live in Past Christiane. They evacuated on Sunday. They went to, um, I think they headed up towards Jackson. I haven't heard from her since Sunday either. So, y'all please continue to pray for my friend Dale. So, I think that's about it for this morning.
have to babysit tomorrow, and then I'm going to have a few days off. <laughs> so I hope I can get into the kitchen and cook. Yesterday, all I, I had, I had forgot to even thaw anything out to cook for dinner, so there's a little grocery store there close to the apartment, and so I just pulled in there and read in there real quick. Of course, everything, all the meat was so expensive. A pack of chicken thighs was seven, eight dollars. So I found a pack of uh, five pork chops for a little over four dollars. So that's what I bought. And Jill had given me a bunch of potatoes the other day and there was a big old sweet potato in there. So I scrubbed it up good and put it in the oven and baked the sweet potato and right before it got done I threw those pork chops in the skillet with the potato and then I cooked me a little roasted a little bit of broccoli and that was my dinner <sighs> okay let me get inside and I've been eating a boiled egg and a, pe a couple of pieces of toast every morning. Y'all can tell when I'm tired and worn out by the dark circles under my eyes. So anyway, y'all have a good day. <laughs> I'll be back and hopefully I'll feel better and look better in the next video. Thank you for being here today. And if, if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. And y'all just keep on coming back.